we finished up our 50 Baptists that everybody should know, and um, that was uh, a lot of fun for me. Um, I hope it was interesting to you uh, to go through uh, some of those dear men and women of God. And uh, I was just thinking uh, last couple weeks that there were a couple names that kept cropping up and we, as we studied Philip Bliss last, last couple weeks and uh, the uh, dear man of God that he was and, and uh, his personal testimony. Um, one of the names that came up was a man by the name of Major Whittle. And I wanted to talk about him today and just introduce you to him. I don't think I've ever um, had a chance to uh, tell his story, and I want to do that this morning. But Daniel Webster Whittle was born in Massachusetts in November of 1840. His parents obviously were great admirers of uh, the American statesman Daniel Webster and, and named him after this great man. Daniel Webster was a strong advocate for our God-given freedoms and the personal responsibilities that, that come along with this, this great blessing that God has, has given us. And um, Daniel Whittle was raised with strong biblical principles in a, in a Christian home, uh, but it, it would be years before his mother's prayers were answered and, and, uh, and he was saved. It would be years. For several years, from the age of 18 to the age of 20 or 21, he worked at a large bank uh, in uh, his hometown. Uh, during this time, he met his future wife, Abby. But in 1861, the Civil War broke out when he was 21 or 22, and he joined the Army. When his unit was ordered south into combat, uh, he married Abby just before leaving. Years later, he would write this about his mother and, and uh, his, his wife. He said, my dear mother was a devout Christian and also parted from me with many a tear and followed me with many a prayer. She also placed a New Testament in a pocket of the haversack that she'd arranged for me. During the war, he fought with General Sherman, um, General Howard, and, um, and he rose to the rank of major. Uh, in the Battle of Vicksburg, however, he was seriously wounded. He lost his right arm and was captured, actually, and became a prisoner of war for a time. It was here, while he was healing in a prisoner of war hospital, um, that he became really concerned about his spiritual condition. And he said this, he said, as I grew better, having a desire for something to read, I felt in my haversack, which, had been allowed, which I had been allowed to keep, and found the little testament that my mother had placed there. I read right through the book, Matthew, Mark, Luke, to Revelation. Every part was interesting to me, and I found to my surprise that I could understand it in a way that I had never had before. When I finished Revelation, I began at Matthew and read it through again. And so for days, I continued reading, and with continued interest, and still with no thought of becoming a Christian, although I could see clearly from what I read the way of salvation through Christ. Uh, the Holy Spirit was laying the groundwork for an event that would, would really transform his life. And one night, uh, as, as Major Whittle uh, was uh, sleeping, he was awakened by a male nurse. And the male nurse had asked him to pray for a boy who was dying uh, uh, down in, in another part of the ward. The nurse confessed that he himself was a, a wicked man and could not pray. And Whittle said this, he said, I, I can't pray either. He said, I've never prayed in my life. I'm just as you are. And the nurse said, you can't pray. I thought from, from seeing you read the Bible that you were a praying man. I can't go back to him alone. Come and see him. So Whittle, in his testimony, says this. He said, I went down to the ward, uh, down, down into the ward to find an 18-year-old soldier pleading for prayer. The boy had been shot in battle, and uh, he was dying, and he knew it. And he told Whittle quickly of his background. He'd been raised in a Christian home um, in a Bible-teaching Sunday school, but he had turned away from all that, and now he was terrified of death. Whittle said, I dropped to my knees. He said, I took his right hand, and in a few broken words, I confessed my own sins and asked God for Christ's sake to forgive me. I believe right there that he did forgive me, and I became his child. Then I prayed earnestly for the boy. The boy became quiet and pressed my hand as I pleaded God's promises. He goes, when I rose from my knees, he was dead. A look of peace was on his face, and I can believe that God used him to bring me to my Savior and used me to lead him to trust in Christ's precious blood. I believe I will meet him in heaven. What a dramatic testimony, um, these, two, these two men who were saved at that time. And, but after the war, uh, Major Whittle moved to Chicago where he went to work for the Elgin Watch Company. Uh, soon Daniel and his family came in contact with another great figure in Chicago, D.L. Moody. Uh, they became the very best of friends, a uh, relationship that, 
that, that relationship with Moody would, would change the course of his life. In fact, Whittle's daughter, May, uh, would even marry uh, uh, Moody's son, William. Uh, in due time, uh, Major Whittle uh, made the decision to leave secular work and devote his life to evangelism. And as you can tell by now, um, he was always referred to as his rank. Uh, he was always known as Major Whittle. And you'll hear that term over and over, uh, referring to his rank in the Army. Um, and and as he as he uh, studied God's word and went he went into evangelism and became one of the leading evangelists of, of the later part of the eighteen of the eighteen hundreds. Um, if you recall, Moody had encouraged Bliss uh, Philip Bliss, who we studied the last two weeks, uh, to enter the Lord's work. And 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 when he did, he he said you know he had had great success with he and Ira Sankey Sankey being the uh, the song leader and the singer, and these and Moody believed that if he could take a team, uh, a preacher and a song leader, um, in, into these uh, cities, um, he would, you know, they were they were great great success, and uh, he had asked Bliss to come into full time service and and leave his his work his very successful work in the music world, and join Major Whittle in in these evangelistic teams, um, so. Um, Bliss did join Whittle, and they enjoyed a, a very close friendship and really tremendous blessing from the Lord until Bliss's tragic death in 1876, which we studied last week. Um, so the fame of this, of this team grew and grew, and until finally it was requested that they bring, they bring this evangelistic team to, to England, and Moody urged them to accept the invitation. They agreed. Uh, their plan was to hold a meeting in Chicago, um, and, and have a meeting in, in Moody's church to, for his congregation uh, shortly after Christmas of 1876, and then they would leave for their preaching tour in England. And of course, however, uh, Philip and his wife were killed in the train wreck uh, right before that could happen. And so, I'm sorry, uh, Bliss and his wife were killed in the, in the train wreck. And uh, Whittle, uh, you know, as I mentioned last week, he went immediately to the scene of the great tragedy, and he spent uh, three days there searching for any sign of personal effects, and he would later lament, he said, we found nothing. They have gone as absolutely and completely gone as if translated like Enoch. Um, and as I mentioned last week, the fire that swept through destroyed all signs of bliss and his wife. And so it was there in Ohio there, though, that God had, uh, would continue the work that bliss uh, could not. And following death of bliss, uh, as I told the story last week, um, Whittle teamed up with the singer musician James McGranahan, who, who felt called with God at that time. And later he would uh, also work with George Stebbins. And in association with these two men, uh, Whittle traveled all over the country and into several countries in Europe, um, preaching the gospel and was a great success there. Whittle himself wrote over 200 uh, text during his life, uh, hymn texts, and um, he, he was known for, for, for directly um, alluding to or quoting directly from, from the Bible. And, and Whittle said this, he said of his, of his hymns, he said, I hope that I will never write a hymn that does not contain a clear message. There are too many hymns that are just meaningless jingle of words. This was written in the 1850s and 1860s. In order to do a, do a good hymn, um, uh, it must be founded on God's word and carry the message of God's love. A few of the hymns that we sing um, over and over again and some of our favorites, There Shall Be Showers of Blessing. There's a royal banner, the banner of the cross. Uh, Why not now? Christ liveth in me. And, and the hymn that I consider is greatest, uh, I know whom I have believed. Uh, a one, wonderful series of hymns that, that he wrote that, that are in our hymn book uh, here, you know, 150 years later that we still use. One of his last efforts was with the soldiers of the Spanish-American War. And he remembered how he had come to the Lord uh, while in the army, and he joined the men in their camp, uh, eating with them, sleeping with them, traveling with them, and preaching, preaching to them. So this man, who had been a recipient of God's grace years before uh, as a wounded soldier in a POW camp, he spent the remainder of his life proclaiming that wonderful grace now to these soldiers as, as they faced death. Um, what an example. Um, Major Daniel Whittle was, and for, to those around him, to even us today. Um, he went home to be with the Lord in March of 1901, um, where he's buried in Northfield, Massachusetts. And just thank the Lord for this man who, you know, history doesn't record much about, much more about him than this. In fact, the reason we know much of his story is because he wrote a tremendous uh, biography of Philip Bliss 
And in that, in that book, he tells his testimony and, and some of his life story, or we wouldn't even know, know these things about him, but um, kind of overshadowed by other larger names uh, around him. But I well, thank the Lord for this, and, and the, that God would raise up more men like Major Daniel Whittle.